here today. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here, and we're glad that you're here in the venues and those that are online right now. We're so thank you, thank you that you're here. And today <clears throat> we are doing a, a new series. Last week we started. Uh, Jason started it, and today we're talking about you know, can we see God? I mean, have you ever seen God at anything? I mean, just amazing things. Today we're going to talk in, in the Bible about a story uh, that is just crazy. It's just one of the crazy stories in the Bible. But before I start it, I want to ask you a question. Um, those of you um, are Christians, would you just raise your hands? Okay, a lot of people did. Not everybody. That's good. That's great. That's fine. Okay. Okay, so those of you that raised your hand that says, yes, I am a follower of Jesus Christ, do you ever have any doubts? That's me too. I mean, even, even pastors sometimes get thinking like, wow, you know, I just, God, it's just, you're not doing what I want you to do. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I'm telling God what to do, right? And that's what we do sometimes. We try to, try to tell, God, you need to do this or that. No, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. God tells us what to do. That's what he's supposed to be doing. But here's the thing. It's just so hard because, you know, I look in the, in the, in the news, and I'm not ch- talking just Tri-Cities. I'm talking about the world. And I look around the world and I'm going, God, what is going on? What is going on? There's so much struggle, so many things going on. There's wars, there's people doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, all this kind of stuff. And then there's like sex trafficking. And there are people around the world that are dying because they don't have clean water. And we're, we see earthquakes, and when an earthquake happens, all of a sudden a lot of people are dying because of that. And you go, God, why? What's going on, God? Are you on vacation? Are you not doing what you're supposed to be doing? What is going on? But I, can, I, can I tell you that God, <laughs> God knows exactly what he's doing. God knows exactly what he's doing. So I want to give, give you a story in June. It's in John 9. John 9 is just a crazy, crazy story. But before I give it to you, I want to give you something to understand. And here it is. You don't have to understand everything to believe in something. You don't have to understand everything to believe in something. Can I tell you something? I've been a pastor for oh, 20, I don't know, 20-some years. And I don't know everything about God. I think when I get to heaven, I still won't know everything about God. But God is always doing something. God is always doing something. So here's here's the story I want to share with you. And it's 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 in John 9, verse 1, and it says this. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. Now let's just pause for a second. This guy has been not able to see since he was born. We don't know how old he is. We don't know how old he is. He's he's, he's probably in his 20s, 30s, maybe something like that. And what's amazing thing about that is that he has never seen the sun rise. He's never seen the sun set. He's never seen a flower. He never seen his mom and dad. He's never seen his family, nothing at all, just crazy. And because of this, because of this, he couldn't get a job. The only thing that he could do is be a beggar on the street. If, it was, if he was in this time in 2023, he'd probably be having a sign over at, at Walmart. That's probably what he'd be doing because he, didn't have, he couldn't have any, do, get money for anything else just crazy when you stop to think about it. Verse 2 says this. Verse 2 says, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, they're talking to Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was blind? Now let's just pause for a second. Here's the, here they're going, hey, Jesus, why, who, whose fault is it that he's blind? Is it him himself? Did he, did he, did a, did he sin in the womb? No, no. Was, did, did the mom or the dad or mom and dad both do something? No, no. For some reason, though, we always want to put the blame on somebody, right? 
That's what we wanted. We always want to blame it on somebody else. And I'm going to tell you, it still happens today. Somebody will say, wow, you got cancer? What did you do to get that? Whoa. Or, let me give you another, let me give you a true story. Here's a true story. When my mom and dad, they took me and my brother to church. My brother was four, is four years older than me. And we went to church. And going to church and doing all the right things worked for me, but not for my brother. My brother went into drugs and stealing and leaving, and he would be gone for a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months. The longest time he was gone that we never knew here where he was was two years, and we didn't know if he was dead or alive. And I know that people at the church that we went to were looking and talking about my parents and saying, oh, man, they just screwed up their kid. But yet, it worked for me. And for some reason, people just like to point their fingers to other people and blame other people. Does that help anybody? Has any of somebody ever point a finger to you and say, why, why did you do this? That doesn't help. That doesn't help. And this is what they're saying. They're saying to Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, the man or his parents, that he was born blind? I mean, just think about this. They just want to blame anybody. Oh, that's going to, that's going to make it really good. That's going to make it better. No, no, that's not at all. Verse 3. Verse 3 says this. Neither, this is Jesus saying, <clears throat> Jesus says to him, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened, now listen to this. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Just think about that. Let me say it happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. In other words, God is going to use him for this, to be glorified. It's amazingly. What we often, what we often call setbacks are actually setups to be glorified, to glorify God. That's exactly what it's about. It's all about that. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about God. We think it's a setback. God says, no, it's a setup for my glory. Amazing. Amazing that God does that. Now, i got to be totally honest with you. When I was reading this week, getting ready for the message, I was thinking... Okay, if I, was, if I knew that I was blind from, from baby to however years he was now, and that God's going to get glory from this, how would I feel? I mean, I've been blind for years so that he can get glory? Whew, that's a tough thing for a guy to be blind for all those years, for all of those things. But it has a good ending. We're gonna not, don't don't look in the fur, don't look in your Bible. I'll tell you in just a minute. But I'm going to tell you, there's other people in the Bible that have been done like this, where God is God is going to set, set them up to get glory. This is one of the guys is Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph was one of the guys, and he was uh, he he wanted to do everything with God and stuff, and and then the next day his brothers come out and they were thinking about killing him, and then they said, ah, no, we'll just we'll just sell sell him somewhere, get some money, and he did, and then he ended up in jail and all this kind of stuff, and and you and you look at that and you go, whoa, whoa, Joseph, I mean that that was a setback, but no, it was a it was a setup for God's glory. That's what God does. God wants to use this, black, this, this, this blind guy. God wants, to, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. God can use anybody to get glory. Did you know that? God can use anybody. 
God can use anybody. And some of you are going, whoa, Mark, I don't think I can. I mean, I know there's a lot of people here that God, God can use them. But I, they can't. God can use anybody he wants. He's God. He can do whatever he wants. Just a crazy story. So God's ways are higher, as higher than our ways. Can I tell you, you have thoughts, you've got plans. For me as the church, I've got plans and church, for the church and everything that we're doing. And the thing is, God's ways are higher than mine. And whatever plans you have, God's are higher than the, yours. It's just amazing. God is always working on something. God is always doing something. And then... We get back into the story about the blind guy, and it says in verse 6, Jesus does something really weird. Jesus does something really weird to this blind guy. And I'll read it to you. It says, uh, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Now, I want you to understand this. Pretend I'm the, the guy that's blind, and I can't see. And I can hear people, but I can't, I can't see. And all of a sudden, I hear somebody coming up next to me. And I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they're going to give me some money, because that's what I do. I beg. I need money. And I'm, gonna, I, I'm, just, I'm waiting out for the money, but instead, I didn't get any money. All of a sudden, instead, I hear... <laughs> and... And he's going, oh, great. <laughs> now they're spitting at me. They're just this nasty. This just, this is, this, this, this just sucks. This, right? That's what he's seeing there or feeling because can't, he can't see. But what he doesn't know is the one that spit is the only one that can heal him. And Jesus spit his saliva and it went into the dirt. And Jesus starts spinning it around and made mud. And here's the blind guy. Doesn't know what's going on. He, some, somebody spit, don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, he feels somebody go, going like this. And then the guy, and he doesn't know who the guy is, but he goes, go wash in the pool. And I'm going to tell you, if I was this, this guy that was blind, if I was blind, Jesus wouldn't have to tell me to go wash. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to wash anyway. Somebody spit on me. It's just nasty. It's, it's got mud. It's just it's terrible, right? So he goes anyway, right, because he just wants to get the stuff off. And so he goes there and he gets it off. And as he's wiping off everything, all of a sudden he goes like this and he can see. Amazing. Amazing. God can do anything he wants. God can do anything he wants. Amazing thing. So the man went and came home seeing. Amazing. That is an amazing thing. Can you just imagine? You know, I noticed when I was looking at this message this week, I noticed that he didn't, when he opened his eyes, he go, whoa, I can see. He didn't look for the, for the guy that healed him. You know where he went? He went to his mom and dad's house. He went to mom and dad's house, and he comes out and he says, Mom, Dad, Dad, I can see. I can see you for the first time. Dad, you're kind of a little flabby right there. Come on, Dad. Come on. Right? All of a sudden, he he doesn't look for the person that healed him. He wants to go home. He wants to have a celebration. That's what he wants. He gets so excited. Mom, Dad, I got to tell you, I can see. It's amazing. It's just a crazy story. Hmm. And here's this guy. Here's this guy that was formerly blind, but is not anymore. And all he wants, all he wants is he wants a party. He wants to celebrate. He wants to everything. He's just to have this. 
this amazing party. But everybody else wants an explanation. Well, how did this happen? Who did this? Shame on them. What's the... And he's going, I just want cake. I just want to have something to celebrate about. I, I don't know. I mean, how did... And they asked in verse 10, How then were your eyes opened? They demanded. They demanded. Verse 13. They brought to the Pharisee the man who had been blind. Now the, the day in which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Why do I say dum, dum, dum? Because this. Because, it, because what happens, it happened to be on the Sabbath. Back then the Sabbath was the time to go to church and that was on Saturday. And you can work any other day, but not on the Sabbath. And so when Jesus spit in the dirt and made mud and put it on the guy's eyes, that was called work. And so everybody else was being mad, going, hey, you know what? You know what, Jesus? You have six other days you can work, but you happen to do it on the Sabbath. Shame on you. Shame on you, Jesus. Woo! Can you imagine that? Good grief. I'm sure the blind guy wasn't, wasn't saying that. He's going, hallelujah, I can see. That's exactly what he's talking about. But for some reason, they were upset because Jesus healed a guy on the Sabbath. Man, man, oh man. Hmm. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him, how... How he had received his height. And this is what the guy says. I love this. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Well, who did it? I, I, I don't know who did it. I mean, I, I was still blind when they put it on me. I don't know. I don't know. All I know, I was blind, now I see. I was blind, now I see. That is all I can tell you. I don't know the guy. I, don't, I know it's a guy. I heard his voice, but I don't know who he was. I couldn't see. Just think about it. I, I washed, and now I see. Just a crazy story. Verse 16 says this. Uh, some of the Pharisees says, This man, Jesus, is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. Good grief. Can I tell you, basically what they were saying back then is that God has to be in a box. That's why I brought this up here. Sometimes we want to put God in a box too. We want God to do what we want him to do. And it has to fit right in this box right here. And that's what they wanted back then. And I'm going to tell you, we do not tell God what he can do in this box. In fact, he will not even be in a box because we do not tell him, he tells us. And for some reason, we think that we can tell God what he can do and what he can't do. And that's what they were doing back then. You shouldn't have do that, doing that, help, help, helping that guy because it's a Sabbath. Shame on you, Jesus. I mean, just think about that. And I'll tell you, over the years, I've had a few... Uh, other churches around the church, around the community, that talk about our church. They say, you don't have, you don't have commi committees? What? You don't do that? You don't have robes? You don't stand up and sit down and all that stuff? No. And they go, well, well then God can't work there. And I'm like, why would you say that? But let me be fair. There's been a few people from C3 that have been saying the same thing to others. Like, hey, you know, these churches that are, that are um, you know, up, they sit down, they up, down, they have, the, the, they have all these the other things, all, the, all these things. Just because they don't do it like we do doesn't mean that God's not working with them. God can do whatever he wants. It's God. We don't tell God what to do. God tells us what to do. But for some reason, we say, no, you got to be right in this box. God in a box. And that's what they were doing back then. And we still do that here 
in 2023. We have to realize we do not say, God, this is what you need to do. God tells us what we are to do. God will never be in a box. God can do whatever he wants. It's all about him. It's not about you, me, us. It's not about us. Let me give you something. God is often doing the most when we understand it at the least. God is always, always doing something. He's always doing something. Wow. Verses 18. Jesus. Jesus talks to him. Verse, verse 24 says, A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God. Now, listen, I love this part. They said, give glory to God. Interesting. When I was reading this, I noticed that they said, only give the glory to God, not to Jesus. Jesus was the guy that healed, healed him, but they didn't say anything. No. Here's the, here's the people back then. Oh, well, yeah. Give glory to God, not to Jesus. No, no. He shouldn't have done that. Shame him. Okay. We know this man, Jesus, is a sinner, they say. Yeah. Whether he is a sinner or not, the blind guy says, I don't know. One thing I do know, and this I love this answer. One thing I do know, I was blind, now I'm see. Tell me how it happened. I don't know. Over here, I was blind, now I can see. Tell me again. I was blind, now I see. That's all I can tell you. I mean, the guy spit on me, but it actually worked. I don't know who that guy is. I don't know what to say. It's just crazy. It's just a story that, like, wow. Hmm. Even though there are many people that I don't, many things that I don't understand, there are so many things that are undeniable. God can do anything he wants. So, Mark, what you're saying, you say, Mark, What is something that's undeniable that we exist? That we exist. Just think about this. And you you already know this, but let me just, just say it anyway. Here's the earth. Here's the sun. And you know this. If the sun is just a little bit closer to the sun, or uh, to the earth, we're going to burn and we're going to die. And if the sun is just a little bit farther away, just a little bit, we will freeze to death. And nobody, be, nobody will live, and there will be no food growing, nothing at all. It's just amazing that the earth and the sun is exactly where they're supposed to be. And we go, well, how does that happen? How does that actually happen? Well, there's, there's two things. The first one is this, is that there is a creator. That's number one. Or, or everything came from nothing. So it's either one or the other. Do you believe that there is a creator? Or do you believe that it just came out of nothing? I'm going to tell you with everything that we look up in the sky shows us that there is a creator. There is a God. There is a God that loves you, that wants you to have a relationship. Yes, he helped this, blind, this guy not be blind anymore, but God wants to help you too. And God wants glory through you. This is what God does. He wants to use us. We're not a setback, we're a set up. That is what we are doing. That was what God uses for us. It's just crazy story. And you know what's interesting? I was working on the message this week. I realized something. You know, there's a lot of people in the Bible that not not only just the disciples, but a lot of other people that were followers of Jesus Christ. And all these people, all these people actually saw Jesus do miracles, saw Jesus die on a cross, 
and saw Jesus rise again. And that is why some of his followers, when there's time that for them to die, they died in certain ways. Let me tell you some of the certain ways. Luke was hanged on an olive tree. Mark was dragged until his body was, fell apart into pieces. Peter was crucified upside down on a cross because he felt unworthy of dying the same way that Jesus died. James the, the greater was beheaded. Jesus the lesser was stoned at the age of 94. And when he didn't die, they beat his brains out with a club until he died because he wouldn't deny his faith in Christ. Can I tell you, there are people right here that went to their death saying, I cannot denounce Jesus. I saw him do miracles. I saw a blind guy get open. I saw this guy that died on a cross, and I saw him come back out. And because of that, because of that, from that time clear to today, we have one-third of the world saying that they are followers of Jesus Christ. God can use anybody. God can use anybody. Set back, no, set up for glory to God. That is God's heart. God, can I tell you, God is doing something. He's always doing something. And he wants to work with you so that you can be a setup and, be, and he can get glory. Amazing. And here's how it ends, the story. The story ends this way. In, in verses 35 and 36, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Hmm. Tell me, so I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one you are speaking with. And look at, what the, look at what the former blind guy said. He says, then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he what? Worshipped him. He's out there walking down these dirt roads and stuff. Jesus comes and talks to him and says, I'm the one that healed you. And all of a sudden, he goes, I do believe. And he worshipped, and he worshipped with everybody who were watching him. Even the people that were saying, shame on you, Jesus, you shouldn't do that. He's seeing this blind guy is now saying, God, Jesus, you are the son of God. Do you believe that? God is a great God. He loves you. He wants to use you. He wants you to not be a setback, but a setup so that he can get glory, so other people can see what he can do and more people will come into a relationship now in this world and in the next. Let's pray. So, Father, today we pause. And, Lord, I thank you that you are an awesome God. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you've created everything for us. And I thank you, God, that you don't make us a setback or a set up to help for you to get glory. So, Lord, would you use us? Would you help us? Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. And, Lord, I know right now those that are, are watching on TV and those that are in the venues right now, there's a lot of people that are raising their hands and saying, yeah, I do have a relationship with you. But, Lord, I also know, I also know that there are those on TV and those right now that are on the venues that don't have a relationship. Or maybe they did at some point, but they, they lost out of it. They stopped. Lord, we just pause today. We say thank you. Those of us that have a relationship with you, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Use us whatever you can. But Father, for those that have never come into a relationship, a relationship or, or maybe they had a relationship and they fell out and they want to come back, Lord, we pray for them. 
So, Lord, right now there are some online, some that are right now, and they're saying, God, would you take me back? Or would you take me for the first time? Lord, I want to be a follower of you. I need you. I don't want to be a setback. I want to be a setup so that you can get glory through me. And so, Lord, you always say yes. You always, you always say yes. And I thank you that you've never say no. You never say no at all. And I thank you, Lord, for those that are coming into a relationship right now. Let me say thank you in your amazing name. Amen.